Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you what our reptile breeding plans are for the year of 2018. We're going to start upstairs and we'll go throughout the house showing you the snakes that we have paired up at the moment since right now is a really exciting time of year where our snakes are paired and then in about six weeks we'll expect eggs. But for now, they're just paired up and we're gonna start with this rack here where we have one pair of hog noses. Actually, it looks like they're getting along. Oh, he might actually be trying to do some things. This is our albino western hognose snake paired up with Huff and Puff, who is our het albino. And I'm just going to leave them alone since he might be trying some stuff there. Push them back in. That would give us their clutch would be half normals, head albino, and half albinos. Then we have, actually, I don't think we, oh, you know what? We have these guys. This is our friend's tricolor hognose snake and we are pairing her up with our male. We're just kind of doing a breeding project together and you think these guys love to dig so I give them tons of substrate to dig around in. Here she is, nice big female. She is in shed it looks like of course when I'm trying to film. She is in shed. She's a nice chunky girl and she has locked up with our male tricolor hognose snake and the tricolors are known for laying several clutches in the same season and I've never bred them before so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she produces for us but I will set her back in here so she can relax. She's a nice chunky girl so she should have some nice big or plentiful eggs. We'll set her back up here. The male is currently on honeymoon with another female in this bin, but they're both buried. Oh, here's the, oh, here's the male. Nope, he's gone. Well, you saw the female, so. Anyway, we have another pair together of tricolors. So we have the male, two females. Uh, over here, we don't really have anything in this rack that's paired right now. This is kind of our younger snake rack. Nothing's really old enough quite yet. The closest one to breeding would be um, and I have them to, well, I have them together right now because she's like a small adult and she can breed, uh, but she does have some growing to do. This is a pastel hognose snake. To be honest, it looks completely like a normal, so I have my doubts on the pastel gene, but whatever. Um, still a pair of hognoses. Oh, you are fierce. That is the male, and he thinks he's all that, which usually the female does, so kind of interesting to see him like that right now. But I'll push them back together. And the, well, I guess our retake is hungry. Uh, the exciting rack uh, in this room anyway is the middle rack. This has the most adults in it. In this drawer, I have a pair of Western fox snakes and we've seen some breeding behavior. No physical locks yet. The large one here is the female. This is Vulpix. This is our male who does not have a name quite yet. But we've seen a lot of the uh, twitching, which is a sign of breeding behavior. And we've seen the males kind of checking her out. I have two males that I've been flip-flopping. Um, but again, no actual locks, but we should get some, hopefully, uh, a nice clutch of fox snakes from them. When we first bred her, she laid 19 eggs and all 19 of them hatched. So she does give us some nice big clutches. Here you go, you can go over here and I will give your cave back. There. Way up here, this is a mislabeled bin, that's not Mr. Wilson. This is the second pair of fox snakes that we have together. This is a brand new female. And let's see, here's her boyfriend. Brand new female, just finished quarantine. So we put her with a male and again, lots of breeding behavior from her too. But just another cute little fox snake. And then we should be able to, since there's two different males and females set, paired up, we should be able to offer unrelated pairs when, if and when they, their babies hatch. The snakes that I'm probably most excited for in this room, as far as breeding goes, would be the trio of bull snakes. The, the trio would be, uh, I have a female here. This is a hypo bull snake, just a hypo. Nothing really special going on, but she's a good size. And we paired her with our hypo albino male, so they will produce all hypos, het albino. And he has some other genetics going on too, so I'll explain that later. I'm gonna set her back in here. She has already locked up with the male, which is a great sign. Now we just play the waiting game until we get eggs. This would be Mr. Wilson, oh. Hello. Um, 
Well, there you go, breeding snakes right now. This is Mr. Wilson and Mrs. Wilson. Mr. Wilson is a hypoalbino. He is het for exanthic and white-sided. And Mrs. Wilson is het, exanthic, white-sided, and albino. So they can throw all sorts of different things. They can throw albinos, they can throw exanthics, white-sideds, uh, and a combination of the above. So if we could get some snows from this pair. But since they're doing stuff, I'm going to just leave them be. Let's head downstairs. Over here in quarantine, this is on a separate level of our house, is a just a completely normal hognose snake. She's a cutie too. She's brand new and that's why she's still in quarantine, but she is breeding size. As you can see, she's a decent size here. So I really hope to get a nice clutch from her this year. And over on this side is a condomorph. She's a little bit more skittish, but she's also breeding size. She's a nice healthy weight. Oh my goodness, you're fine, you're fine. I know, she's also new. They both came in this morning actually. And as you can see, I'm using disposable items as hides so I can just toss them after their quarantine is up. I think I'm gonna pair my male Conda hognose snake with both of these new girls, mostly because Conda is a co-dominant morph, so if I pair him with her, I'll get some Condas and some normals, and if I pair him with her, since she is a Conda as well, I will get some normals, I'll get some Condas, and I'll get possibly another super or two like I did last year. Downstairs, we have a couple of enclosures here for garter snakes. This has all of our girls in it. This is an albino checkered garter snake. That's April. She is gravid right now, I believe. And up top, we have a couple of our newer garter snakes. Let's see if I can get inside of this tank so you can see them a little closer. The Blue one might be a little skittish. She's a bit new. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so up here basking together is another albino checkered garter snake, another girl. That is our new California red-sided garter snake. And over here is half and half. She is our hybrid between a plains garter snake and a ribbon snake. And I think she may be gravid too. You can see quite a bit of scale spread along her side and she is constantly hungry, but that's just a garter snake thing. Once they learn that you provide food, they will follow you constantly expecting food at any given moment. Anyway, uh, April down here is a beautiful garter snake and I know she is gravid. It's just a matter of time until she decides to have babies. Last year she had 27 uh, little babies, but who knows what she'll have this year. Over here is the dad to uh, the albino checkers. Uh, we paired them not too long ago. Actually, we just recently separated him into this enclosure so that he couldn't breed with the California red-sided because we don't want to mix those two species together. So he is on a vacation from the ladies and he is enjoying his peace and quiet. Also downstairs, I have a couple other pairs together. In this enclosure is my pair of false water cobras and they've pushed their humidity box towards the edge. There's the male, the female is the big one. This is the uh, female right here and the male's over here. I wonder if he's gonna poke out the other side. Ugh. You know what, I'm just gonna take this out because he moved it to the side anyway. I don't know if we'll get babies from these two. I doubt we will because last year she did not have any babies and he tried his hardest. I'll give him credit for that. So we're actually on the market for a new female since I believe she's just too old to have the desire to breed anymore. And that's okay. We still love her. She's a beautiful false water cobra. Um, and we'll just get babies from someone else. Down here we have my very first pair of bull snakes. These are the parents of our first clutch and our second clutch of bull snakes from the past two years. This is the father and the mother's back there. They're currently together just temporarily for breeding purposes again this year. And although he has shown a lot of interest in her, she's like, nah, I don't, I don't need you in my life. So they get along, but I haven't seen any locks. So I don't know if we're gonna get babies from them. I really hope we do. And there's a possibility that maybe he did figure out what to do when I just wasn't looking. So we'll stay tuned for maybe babies from them. I mean, she is pretty chunky, so maybe she's starting to show signs of being gravid, but we haven't paired up again just in case. Eh. Turn. Okay. All right. Last but not least, this is our heated green tree python room and Ed has his pair of Biox together. Since it's daytime and they're asleep, I can open this up without fear of getting bit. This is Cru uh, no, Dolores and Cronk. That's Dolores, right? Nope. 
That's Dolores. Yep. Man, she's gotten so much green. So Dolores and Kronk, they're currently at that stage where they're like, ew, it's a boy. I don't want to touch him, but they'll come around eventually. This is our first time breeding green tree pythons, but we've uh, been doing a lot of research and we are ready and we can't wait for baby red or yellow neonate green tree pythons. That's going to be really exciting when that happens. Over here, although I know it's dark, so I apologize. Lighting's hard to get correctly in this room. This is Cruella. She is another Biot green tree python and we'll be breeding her with Kronk as well. He actually had a turn in her cage a few days ago, but they showed no interest. And we, so we split him up for a little bit and put him with Dolores instead, but we'll just be putting him back eventually until they lock up. It might take some time. The exciting thing in this room would be the eggs that we currently have, because since this entire room is heated, man, it's messy up here. Uh, since it's heated, it works great as an incubator. So we don't have to uh, turn on another uh, machine in our house, basically just to heat and incubate eggs. We can just keep them in this room to incubate. Uh, upper shelves are a warmer temperature than lower shelves. So we just incubate at different heights based on the species and that egg's requirements. Right here, we have some fat-tailed gecko eggs. And I think the ones that are due to hatch soonest, yeah, would be these two. They should be hatching in the next week or two. Mom was an amel and dad was supposedly het amel or albino, but we have our doubts. So I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up being normals. I think those two, those are the very first eggs from one of our other fat-tailed geckos. And I don't think they're fertile. Usually when they're denting like this, it means they're not fertile, but we're giving them a little bit more time. That one does look promising, thankfully. So we have three, maybe five babies on the way. And the last egg we have is this one. They were laid February 24th, should hatch sometime in April. I wonder if I can split this up. There was a clutch of four, but some of them ended up not being fertile and they just started molding out like this one. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually after this, I'm going to cut this dead egg off so it doesn't spread anything bad to the good egg. But this is an African egg eating snake egg. So this is one of those species that not many people breed and we're fingers crossed going to get maybe one or two more clutches from our breeding adults since they retain sperm because we haven't had a male for a little while now. We actually are looking for a new male so that we can continue having fertile clutches of eggs. But for now we have one little baby egg eater on the way. That covers everything that we're expecting this year. My favorite, again, would probably be these bull snakes. So a challenge for you would be with this pair here, which I'm gonna open up just briefly again to remind you what they are. We have Mr. Wilson, which is a hypo albino, het exanthic and het white side, and Mrs. Wilson, which is triple het for exanthic white side and albino. Let us know in the comments below the list of possibilities that we might get for, as far as babies go, from this pair. All of those genetic traits are just basic recessive traits. That's your clue. So list out the possibilities. And remember, there can be combinations of multiple different types. And who's attacking us is this legless lizard. You are such a jerk. Why are you such a jerk? I feed you. You should love me. You should love me. Yeah, whatever. That's, I need a name for him. Oh, and later in the year, we will probably be breeding the Conda pair of hognoses again. Since she had babies late in the season last year, we're giving her some time off so she can get her weight back, which she pretty much already has, but I still want to give her some time off. This was the mother to the Conda Conda clutch we had last year. And the babies, I still have some of them anyway. We'll try not to get babies in the early winter because that ended up being horrible with the babies eating. They did not want to eat at all throughout the winter. So that's been a nightmare. Well, that about does it for the list of snakes and geckos that we're planning on breeding in 2018. If anything changes, I will definitely keep you posted. And if we start getting, or when we start getting eggs, I will definitely keep you posted on those too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So random surprise, uh, last fall, a friend of ours, Chris from Triple C Reptiles, gave us a pair of het scaleless rat snakes, Texas rat snakes. And we were really excited to possibly be breeding scaleless snakes this spring until the female escaped from her bin last November. That was about six months ago. Since it had been so long, we pretty much gave up hope in breeding these snakes until last night when we came across the female in our living room. We couldn't believe it. When 
when we saw her just slithering around like nothing had ever happened. She looks amazing considering she was missing for six months. So this just goes to show that if you're missing a snake or one escapes and gets loose in your house, don't give up hope because they can survive a long time loose from their enclosures. We assume she probably just hunkered down over the winter and brumated downstairs somewhere, who knows. And now that it's spring and it's warming up again, she also warmed up, became more active, and then we just happened to come across her slithering across our living room. So the plan is to, even though she didn't really lose any weight or much weight when she was off adventuring in our house over the winter, we're going to give her some meals so she is back on track as far as the feeding schedule goes, and then we will plan on pairing them up. So we'll be pairing them a couple months later than we normally pair our snakes, but better late than never, right? So this was a great little surprise. One more snake to add to our breeding plans this year, scaleless rat snakes. And now they're in my shirt. Thanks guys.